Hey guys, it's Nate with Zebros. Today we're going to go over how to install your springs on a KRX four seat car. Now this is a car with a live valve, but the cars that come with the QS3 Fox Shock is going to be the same process. So we'll give you the basic information and how to put them on and go from there. And on those applications like the XP1000, we supply a divider that's cut down, billet nut, another Honda Talon. Uh, this happens to be a 1000R. Okay, obviously step one, you want to get the car off the ground with a jack or on a lift and then remove your lower shock bolt. And this is a 17 millimeter wrench and socket. And then from there, uh, the next step is going to be to back off your preload nut. So there's two nuts on this uh, Fox set up as well as the QS3. So you'll back off the top one with a straight screwdriver and a hammer, knock that loose. And then we're gonna take the preload out so that we can remove these springs. All right, so once you get your preload backed off, you can remove your lower spring retainer. And you'll have to go up quite a ways so that you have enough room to slide that retainer up and out. And then you can remove your lower shock bolt and slide the springs out from the bottom. Okay, then locate your front tender and your front main. And the, the front springs are easy to tell from the rear because the front springs have a three inch ID and the rear are much bigger on the ID for this particular application. So make sure your divider goes back on facing the same direction. So the long lip is gonna be facing down. Okay, one thing to pay attention to after you get the springs on and you've hooked up your lower shock bolt is there is internal bump, top, bump stop springs or negative springs inside these shocks. So in order to get your zero setting, you've got to actually push down on the hub and extend the shock all the way. And if you look there, you can see it moving a half inch to an inch. So you've got to make sure that that's held to full extension in order to set your preload. So I'll just kind of sit on the car and turn the preload nut down until it touches and then we'll count our four to six turns for a beginning setting. We have our four to six turns of preload set. We've made sure the shock was fully extended when we did that. Now you want to set your crossover. Now it's a double nut system like the preload so you'll need a hammer and a screwdriver and you'll back the one off from the other one so that they both are free and then we're going to set a distance from the top of the spring divider that's down inside the spring to the crossover nut of three inches for a good starting point. So we're just gonna turn that down to there and then check that with our measuring tape. All right, so we have our preload set, our crossover is now set, and you want to take a look at your springs and, and time those. You want the tails of the springs to just overlap about a quarter of an inch. That'll help the spring to run a little bit truer and not deflect sideways. Make sure you torque your lower shock bolt to factory torque specs. And that's it for the front. Repeat that on the other side and then we'll move to the rear and go from there. Now, just remember if you have more weight on the car, the four to six turns might not be enough to start. So you may need more preload. And of course the crossover setting that we recommend of three inches, that's a starting point. If you like your ride height and your preload setting, you can move that crossover closer or down, which will make it stiffer on bottoming resistance. So if you have a heavier car and you have a good ride height that you're happy with and you just want more bottoming resistance, just move your crossover. And usually two revolutions is a good adjustment. So go two revolutions, try it, and then go two more if needed, and then lock it down and you're good to go. But this will give you a good starting point. All right, so moving to the rear, obviously lift it off the ground, remove your tire and wheel, and then remove your lower shock bolt with the 17 millimeter wrench. And then we're gonna knock our preload nut loose and back the preload off so that we can get the springs off the bottom just like we did on the front.
All right, so we've got the preload backed off all the way. So we have enough room to remove our lower retainer. Pull that out of the way. And then you can remove the lower shock bolt. The reason we left the lower shock bolt in is so that you can extend the shock all the way. It'll help you to back the preload off. So here we have the rear spring package laid out and you're gonna have some reducing rings. And this is so that we can adapt these larger coils to the smaller hardware. So the factory divider is gonna get reused. You're gonna have one of these on each side and that'll make it fit the larger diameter spring. And then one on each end and then that will go back onto the shock just like the shock once it came off. Okay, and then we're gonna on the car we're gonna put our retainer back in and that will sit inside of that reducing ring and this will hold the coils in the correct position and now at this point we're gonna follow that same idea that we need to make sure that the shock is fully extended so I pretty much have to set on the shock to get that extra quarter inch uh, the training arm and everything still isn't heavy enough to extend the shock all the way and we'll turn it to till it's touching right there and it's not loose. And then we're gonna count our four to six turns of preload for a starting point. All right, so we have everything tied. We've got our preload set, top lock nut is set. We've got our crossover set and on the rear, it's four and three quarters and you're going to go from the crossover nut to the spring divider and it's kind of hard to see the spring divider because of that reducing ring but you have to actually go from that point so just add a little bit when you're when you're siding across to hit your four and three quarter number all right so we have the spring kit installed on this four seat krx and just to recap you know, it's pretty basic. You don't need a whole bunch of tools. You can do it with a jack and do the front and then the rear separately. But you should see around two inches of ground clearance increase. And that all depends on your preload. We've kind of give you some starting points for preload and crossover. If you have extra weight in the car, you can run more preload to get that ride height that you're looking for. And then utilize that crossover adjustment for your bottoming resistance. So. Yeah, you can always find all of our products at zebrosracing.com or reach out to your local Zebros dealer and get your KRX four seat spring kit on order now and take care of that extra weight that you're hauling around and, and gain that increased ride quality that you're looking for.